This is Sunday Gardner, and this is your online travel bus, and I am super excited again to be bringing you another installment of Journey and Entrepreneurship. And we have today Stacy Daniels. She is a wealth strategist, insurance broker, national speaker, and Amazon best-selling author. And before we get and we meet Stacy fully, what I want to say is everybody's journey is different, and I am just so excited to have Stacy here because she is going to like pour into us tips and recommendations for how to make that leap into entrepreneurship. And as always, if you feel that this information is useful, go ahead and share it. And with that, Stacy, thank you for being here. I'm so happy thank to have you. Me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I was just telling you before we hit record that it's my passion. It's, um, it's my skill set. It's my gift. Um, and it's also my, my story to help people learn about their finances and be better positioned to do what they want, what they're wanting. Some people want to be millionaires. Some people just want to be comfortable, but we still have to know strategically how we're going to get there. So I'm grateful that you are, have invited me to talk to people, aspiring entrepreneurs when it's so, um, that's such a, how do I want to describe it? Uh, um, a sensitive area, you know, I want to help. I want to do this, but I'm not quite sure how we're, it's, it's overwhelming. It's so many different directions. That's right. Squirrel, like I don't know, I want to do this, I want to do that. You know what I mean? And so we really do need to have some guidance, especially when it comes to our money. And so thank you, thank you for trusting me to come out and speak. I appreciate you being here. So let's start with how long have you been an entrepreneur? I've been an entrepreneur since 2008. Actually. Okay. Yes. Um, I started off face to face. I wasn't online. I transitioned my business online in 2017. Um, and I was like, Ooh, <laughs> I can sell. I have the gift of gab. I have a passion. I have a story to tell. People like stories. Right. And come to find out that that was not what was needed to transition my business online. So <laughs> some of the tips that I'm talking about today, I had to learn on my own. It was very humbling. It's a whole different world when you're not, when you don't have that body language and that, that nice little touch, you know, when you're face to face, you have to find other ways to stand out and to gain someone's trust um, online. So. That's so true because I similarly started too with the physical business and that transition for online was a big slap in the face. So it's certainly not the same thing. So what made you decide to jump into your physical business and then also transition into the online space? Oh, wow. Um, you know, money was not a story or not a conversation we had growing up. I knew that I was going to college and I knew that sex was for grown, married, mature adults, even though I had a child. <laughs> and, you know, I just had my mother is 40 years older than me and she was raised in the South. And so I'm from the Midwest. But there's a lot of these traditions that I already knew and was instilled in me. Be mannerable and don't go to people's house hungry and things of that nature. You know, don't yes, be yes, yes. <laughs> I always eat before I go to someone's house still. Yes. I'm 46 and I still do that. Home, Make sure you're the one that speak all these different little nuances that I knew that I needed to follow in order to be the lady that my mother was raising me to be, but she did not talk to me about money. And that's okay. You know, that she, that was something that she wasn't aware of. If you're not taught, you can't share it. And that's okay. I learned though, from a 46 credit score, bankruptcy, defaulted student loans, repossessed vehicles, and a check system file um, that, wow, this might be something I need to learn. A bachelor's degree in computer science as a programmer did not mean that I would officially know how to manage my money. So I created the, the um, statement, and I like to say it all the time, personal finance is not common sense. And effective money management is a skill that must be learned. So I want you guys to take yourself, give yourself a break, um, and let yourself off the hook because we feel like just because I've been successful in, in other areas of my life, I'm supposed to automatically know, supposed how to, to know how to do this. If you didn't, if you weren't taught these strategic rules and routines and these powerful but hidden money rules, then you won't know. And so that took me a long time to learn. And once I got past all of the ego and the pride, and I was actually willing and able to ask for some help, then I realized as I was sitting down in front of people, they don't know as well. Um, you know, I'm trying to help you with a life insurance policy and, and tell you about protecting your future, but they don't know how to manage their money monthly um, effectively either. And I'm like, wow, it's so much further back than just a life insurance policy. If you don't have money or you don't have the money, because you would make a $90,000 salary, but if your your bills and your debts and your emotional spending is $80,000, you're still just as broke as anybody else. Amen. Um, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and so um, when I started realizing as soon as there was a shift in their income, they would cancel their insurance policy. And I was like, wow, we need to take a couple steps back 
you know, they realize the value, but they can't afford it because of other things. So that's when I created the Motivating Money Academy. And it kind of went from there. As much as I learned and I spoke and I received awards and accolades for being able to um, help so many different families and, and writing all these policies and, and you know, creating different um, avenues for them, working in churches and, and things. And I was like, you know what, this is my calling. I now realize why I went through the financial um transitions that I went through so that I can relate. And then this whole gift of gab, gift that God has given me, <laughs> feel comfortable early on in our interaction. So I share my stories and my experience and my strengths and my failures and I'm transparent and they like, wow, I've been through the divorce. I've been through this. Yeah. I've been through that. And, and so they are able to just purge all of that. And now I'm like, that's fine. Thank you for sharing. Now here's the steps that we need here's, to take. How do we get better? Yeah. Yeah. And so I love talking to computers. I'm still a techie at heart, but I realized that I'm better and more effective talking to people. And so that's why I transitioned my business online in 2017. I was like, oh, I can help people and use the computer. That's right. Like, so you got the best of both worlds, right? So like I get to be in front of my computer and solve some issues that I know I'm going to have technically. Yes. And I get to show so, my face in front of all these people that I wouldn't be able to meet face to face. Yes. I think that's that was how I wanted to affect change on a larger scale. And that's yeah. how I became internationally known. I'm like, wow, you know, this is awesome. Not just it's like a rap song, internationally known, yeah. <laughs> motivating money. I love that. <laughs> it wasn't on purpose. That just kind of came out. No <laughs> I like it though. <laughs> Um, but yes, I have clients in um, New Zealand. I have clients in Africa. I have clients all over, but um, in London. Um, so, but. I realized that all of that, everything that I went through was so that I can help people, read people, um, and explain to them how just because no matter where you've been, no matter what you've been through, um, no matter where you are right now, you still have a chance to reach financial freedom. And that was after, again, I had to learn, okay, Stacey, just because you know this and you've done that for several years, let's sit back and learn how to do this correctly. And, yep. and that's where I'm at now. So. That's awesome. Stacy. that's a great story. And I think, you know, I just want to touch on the one little thing that you said. And because um, I, I, I personally feel the same thing is or have felt it is, you know, just because you're making six figures and you graduated from college doesn't mean, yeah. you know, like it does yeah. not mean, you know, because if I mean, because my parents, my mom, grandmother never talked about money either. And it was always a struggle. I just knew we never had enough. So to be able to put that into a way that people like me and other people can understand, it's a powerful thing. I mean, you position yeah. us to be so much more powerful in the positions that we are. So I'm just grateful that you, you know what your gift is and God has <laughs> given you that gift. Okay. So you, you made the jump. You're in the online space space. And so, you know, you have two areas where I'm sure you had uh, experienced struggles. So talk about three of your struggles or major lessons learned that you had when you first started your business. Okay. So when I became an entrepreneur, I was scared because it's commission only as a life insurance agent. It's commission only. And I was like, you know, Okay, so the, I went to sell. <laughs> right. I, first of all, I hadn't really been into selling, but to sell something that doesn't even tangibly exist. Yes. I didn't even have a life insurance policy at first. I just mm -hmm. believed in it and I saw the money and I was a single parent in a whole different region of the country. And I was like, okay, well, I need to make money in order to make sure that my son is okay. I graduated during the dot-com bur bubble burst. And so there were so many other people who had a bachelor's degree and I didn't realize that I needed to have an unpaid internship as well. So when I went to get my, went for, out for um, interviews, I didn't have that. So I wasn't as marketable. So thanks for the degree and thanks for the student loans. I still have a son. I need to do <laughs> You're like, thanks, but I still need to make some money. <laughs> my baby needs so more. So I was at home tinkering on my own computer and friends computers, but I wasn't making a salary. And so yeah. I went to the interview and it was an insurance um, company. And so I was like, wow, okay, this is a lot of money and I can do this. And I was fearful, but I felt like I believed in it. I can do it. Great. What I'll say about that is the tip that I want to give to all aspiring entrepreneurs it's wonderful to have a passion and have a dream of I'll be able to help so many people because I believe in this and never let anybody um, deter you from doing that. However, to make that, that road from idea to success less um, hard, <laughs> less hard and short. 
less hard and shorter, find something that you're good at. Identify what your strengths are, identify what your gifts are, and then identify what people are needing or they're already buying. So that's two lists. That's actually something I just sent out today for my midweek money minute. Um, it's an email that I do on my email list, um, just tips and tricks. But I, I mentioned to them, you know, um, find out what you like. A lot of people like, I want to do an, a side hustle, but they're not quite sure where to start. And so my tip is make a list of the things that you know you're good at. People always try to pay you for, they come to you for mm -hmm. Then make a list of what you see people need or they're already buying, you know, and then combine it and see where you can come up with a position or a product that covers both of them. An example that I put in my email today is if you like talking about beauty and fashion and jewelry and you have the gift of gab or, or you're not an introvert, you're an extrovert. And so you don't have a problem talking to anybody and everybody. Maybe you should try being a network marketer for, I wrote down a couple companies, um, for... Avon, Paparazzi, or Mary Kay, um, so try to work for them because they'll pay you to talk to people about fashion and jewelry. That's right. That's right. Yeah, That's that right. might not be something that you want to do long term, but it'll put money in your pocket. So that means it's giving you a seed that you can now invest into the, the vision or the passion that you have. I love um, that. We married at the time, and so he was taking care of our finances at home while I was trying to learn the ropes of what's the right way to, to do the policy or the right way to do the, did the um, call and make an appointment. I was cold calling, you know, mm -hmm. door knocking and all of those different types of things. So that um, learning curve, I had someone that had my back. But, you know, after a while, he wasn't wanting to support me. So it was a struggle at home because he was like, you just need to get a job. You know, most people who are get a real job, like, you know, real. <laughs> Sometimes, but you know, that feast and famine. And yeah. so that just gave me more of a resolve that I was going to, I'm not a person. I don't like failure and I'm a hashtag reform overachiever. So I was like, I'm going to get this. I've never put too much time in it. I can do it, you know? And so that just made me go harder, but I wish I would have had that tip to just do something that I'm good at first find a need and that'll give me some of the money so that will relieve some of the pressure and some of the conflict at home until I was able to be more successful as an entrepreneur. So I think that's a great tip. I think that's great. Okay. So you, um, you know, that's a, that's an amazing tip for people to be able to leverage in, you know, as you're thinking about becoming an entrepreneur, um, even if you're thinking about going into the travel space. So any other tips that you want to share before I go to the next one? Um, no. Okay. All right. So now you've been doing it and you've been doing it since 2008, 2000, you said 16 for the online part, right? 17. 17. And so, you know, my audience is people who are either they've launched and they've started a travel business and they need to up level or they're about to launch. What tips or recommendations would you have for somebody who is thinking about launching above what you've just said um, and they've never done it before? Like they've never done it before. Well, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a, I have a freebie that I want to give you guys and it, I'm going to explain it a little bit and then I'll make sure that she puts the link in the um, comment in the description section for you guys. Perfect. But what it is, is um, whether you are getting ready to leap, maybe you have a full-time job and you're like, you know what, 2019 I hear is the year of entrepreneur. Well, I want, I have dreams and aspirations. I can do it too. Or if you already leaped and you like, okay, I'm making some money. I'm in feast and famine and there's just no system or process to the money. I need it to be more um, regular. I need to, re um, um, what's the word? It's just a little bit. I need to. Um, consistent flow. Make more consistent. Yes. Um, regulate that's the word i look for i need to regulate my, my finances and my expenses and my emotional spending so that i can live what I, you know making money and spending things that i want and pay the necessary and save for my future and if you're an entrepreneur you need to fund your own retirement as well right so yep. i need to have a more consistent income and savings of my money and leads that's going to turn to income so what can i do i suggest there are four different areas and i, I call this are you financially prepared to be an entrepreneur um, and you know, most of us aren't, and we don't think about that, you know, 50% of business is within the first two years and it's been due to cash flow problems, not mm -hmm. because you're not making enough money, but you don't have it readily available when you need. And That's so right. you try to go in debt, you go get credit, you get business loans. So what can I do to make sure I have these strategic pillars in place so that I always have money coming in, customers coming in and I'm putting my money where it needs to be. So there are four areas, put your pen, put your pen. 
Get your pen. Gotcha. Um, you can watch the replay. <laughs> so the first one is mindset. You know, as an uh, as an employee, we kind of get comfortable. I don't really like this job. I'm going to go in and I'm going to have work. But as long as I come in and I'm on time and I don't start any problems, you know what I mean? I know I'm going to get two weeks. That's a ruckus. <laughs> <laughs> They'll still give me my check. <laughs> they still don't pay me. I might not like how much I'm making, but I'm going to get paid. You know what I mean? So we plan in two, three months in advance, calculating I'm going to take $50 out of here, you know, um, so I can go to this trip. We plan in that because it's kind of a surety. As long as I show up, you know what I mean, unless something major happens. Um, well, that's not the same thing when it comes to um, as you're an entrepreneur. We need to have some discipline. We need to set some hours at work when you're working. Don't blame. Uh, I'm telling you from experience. I tried to work in my bed <laughs> on my laptop, and I'm telling you before about three hours. I might give you a good three hours, and then that laptop is closed, and I'm pulling the cover up and I'm flipping on the TV. <laughs> my TV is off. And then the next day I'm like, man, I needed to do this because today you I need to finish that. Yeah. On the top. <laughs> so, um, have the mindset check. You know. There's a different, there's a major shift between being an, on, an employee and an entrepreneur. That's right. The second one is your personal finances. Have an understanding, a clear picture of what your um, variable expenses are and your expenses that won't change. Yes, we need to know that. And then whatever they are, then you need to um, have that money in an account for six months. And if you're an employee, then you can say, okay, well, um, these are the, this is how much it takes to run my house. My light and phone and gas and my leisure expenses that I like, those twos and fews, those lattes or whatever, those movie theaters, the kids like the Starbucks. Or whatever. You know, this is how I those <laughs> on a monthly basis. So I need to have this for six months, four to six months at least, bare minimum. Um, just you know, for, that's usually how long it takes for your business to kick in and be regularly bringing in customers and, and referrals and such. And also by the time you have a clear understanding of how to run your back office, you know? Yes. So um, <laughs> that's so true. I have my expenses um, for my business and for my personal. So that's three and four. So one is my mindset, work on some different questions, realize what your strengths and your weaknesses are. What are your spending tendencies? You know, um, where you may be lazy when it comes to things that you need not to be, because it will directly affect your, um, your business when you become an entrepreneur. And personal finance, know what my expenses are, my overhead and things I like to spend on. And the same thing for your business. Do you have a domain charge? Do you have an yeah. auto responder cost? You know, things of that nature. Do you have, do you pay for, contractors like Fiverr to purchase graphics mm -hmm. and such, you know, whatever that you're spending on a monthly basis, know what that is and then have that for six months, put it in an account. And then um, the last one guys, which I think is the most important and the secret is, the secret to entrepreneurship. We're like leaning in. I know. Yes. You see me. I mean, <laughs> I like the way you lean in. I'm leaning in. What girl? Tell me. <laughs> entrepreneurship is our relationships. That's a good one. I can't do it all. I shouldn't mm -hmm. try to do it all, but we do. And I don't mm -hmm. know why we do. We superwoman and we supermen and it's my baby. It's my business and it's my money. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. And that means it's my struggle. <laughs> that it's my business my, <laughs> and my money. <laughs> you know, so that means you owning all of it. The struggle, the fail, the, you know, so why not? You know, we learn from so many different people how to do so many different things. Let's go ahead and find someone that we like, know, and trust um and get some guidance on where we can do this and where we can do that and rub elbows with them but you have to make it you know like i'm not saying tell somebody show me how you run your business how you created it all spend your time with me and help me build up make it mutually beneficial you know so right. find you some power partners you know your clients came to you after they went somewhere else and after they go to you they're going to go to somebody else so maybe rub elbows with the people that they're going to go to before you and the people they're going to go to after you so yeah. they can start sending you their clients you know when they mention something like i'm a wealth strategist when they mention to somebody that's asking how can i um have guaranteed paychecks and paychecks when i retire that's tax free and it's monthly you know i'm an entrepreneur and i don't know how to set my money up but i don't want to have to pay taxes and i don't want to have to worry about market risk so i don't want to put my money and like a 401k or a 403b or you know ira and, and then as soon as the stock market up and down i'm losing my money where can i yeah. put it in guaranteed to grow they will send it to me so i deal with accountants you know a lot of people start off fixing their tech their um credit first that's the first time they the first thing they become financially aware about i need to fix my credit it's free yeah, something's wrong with yeah <laughs> 
the law is on my side. It doesn't take that long. You know, I really do have all of the power. Let me start worrying about fixing my credit. And then after that, they say, oh, well, I want to do more now. So their next step is usually coming to me. How do I build a business? How do I, because I, I help um, Gen X females monetize themselves, master personal finance and um, be positioned to mon to maximize on their retirement options. So they come to me for the middle of the road before you go to the investment side of things. Yep. So I have relationships with credit specialists, tax specialists. They'll fix your taxes, but they can't help you start your business and all of that. So they come to yep. me for that. And so that's what I suggest. That's the fourth thing. Build up your relationships with different people who can feed you. Imagine if you had 10 people that you were rubbing elbows with. You're sending them people. They're sending you people. You might even have a package that if you go to that person, they give you a, you, you get a, if you get, I have an accountant. And if you go to that person to fix your business, she'll give you 20% off of her fee or something like that. So that is mutually beneficial. Have you about five to seven to 10 people can't have too many. And if they all send you one person each month, that's less work you have to do. Absolutely. That person is going to talk you up. They're already going to sell you. You know, so by the time they call you, they probably know your prices. They already know some testimonials. You know what I mean? That's you just right. not mess it up at that point. So if you can get that, those clients coming in through building those relationships, then that's half the battle. Have your money in order. So I don't have to do all of the hustle to bring in money because I have friends bringing me, bringing me clients. And then when I make my money, I already strategically know how to put it in different places because I've, I have a complete picture of where my money goes and where it needs to go, how I make it, how I'm spending it. And yeah. I have a mindset of even though I have things going on at home or I have a tummy ache, unless it's an emergency, I need to be in my business doing certain things. So those That's right. four are is what I suggest um, we all have a good hold of. Um, whether you're getting ready to jump into entrepreneurship or you already have, you just want to get off that hustle reel. So, yeah, you want to get off that wheel. I love uh, it. So, so the, I had a PDF for you, a, work, a workbook. So I'll put that, she'll put that link up there for you. That's right. The link will be, I don't ever know if it's up or down, but it'll be here. And, <laughs> um, and it is available for you guys to click on there. So yeah. Stacy, it was amazing to talk to you. And you know, Stacy talks fast. So if you didn't catch all of those things, I got them for you and click on her link and she's going to have um, there. She also, Stacy, talk about your group. I do want people because I think everyone that I know, you know, you talk about rubbing elbows, everyone that I'm coming in contact can benefit from your services and just being motivated by what you've got. So just talk a little bit about your group and how um, someone can get more of you. <laughs> All right. Well, I do have the Motivating Your Money uh, Facebook community. If you are looking to um, live your best 2020 and beyond, or you have a 2020 vision, you don't have to play on words because next year is 2020. I wear glasses. 2020 is supposed to be perfect vision. So if you have a, yes, <laughs> 2020 vision <laughs> and beyond, and you're wanting to work towards it with support, with a, um, a judgment-free zone where people post things, they post their wins and their failures, and then people support you and offer um, their own win and failures um, stories as well. So it's camaraderie, then come join us in our free Facebook community. And again, that's at Motivating Your Money. Um, I do have a group coaching program, um, and that's if you actually wanted somebody to we do a two-hour training twice a month so it's all about remember i told you i help you monetize yourself i help you master personal finance and then after you've done that i can even talk to you about better position yourself to maximize on your retirement options um so those are the two that's my group group environment but with the um link that she's being which she will be putting up there i'm going to give you guys uh, um a discounted pricing it will come with a video and one workbook but that's only the beginning if you want somebody to work with you one-on-one -on -one and you want all the complete course then instead of it being 67 dollars, i'm actually going to give it to you guys for 47 dollars. so Woo! yes <laughs> that link you already have it up there she'll be an affiliate for you guys so that's right. And Stacy is amazing. So she is my financial coach. Um, and I love, love, <laughs> love all that she is helping me accomplish personally. So I know that she can help you guys as well. So Stacy, again, thank you so much for coming to talk to my community. It was great to have you. Money is so important to what it is that you're trying to do and whatever you're trying to get accomplished. So it's important <laughs> to have a great relationship with it. So, and Stacy's going to help you get there. So yeah. with that, Stacy, thanks so much. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye guys. Bye.